Welcome everyone to another episode of the Creative Mountain Mama podcast. I am joined by Evgenia today. She can be found at Nourished Motherhood and she talks about maintaining a healthy lifestyle, not getting burnt out while homeschooling and nutrition. Thank you for joining me, Evgenia. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Can you tell me a little bit about your mission? Oh, yes, of course. My mission is to um, provide education and uh, guidance for homeschooling moms. And sometimes it's not necessarily homeschooling moms, but uh, regular moms, which uh, their kids are in school um, to basically feel nourished in their lifestyle, uh, to feel great, to be able to keep up with their kids, to run <laughs> Um, after their kids and be able to catch them to play active games and, and we do it through movement through working out through uh, great nutrition and through habits beautiful mission she shares a lot of what she does at dot nourish dot motherhood on social media and i understand this is your business can you tell me a little bit about your background Yes, um, my background is very interesting because I was a competitive athlete in Russia. I was uh, not nourished myself at all. And then I moved to Canada. I was still working out, doing crazy things, uh, thinking only about how my body looks. But deep inside, I never felt really happy. And then my son, son was born and it uh, the birth of him brought up all the things from the inside out, out. And I did not feel happy. I did not feel uh, good about my uh, motherhood, my own journey, my fitness, my um, wife um, journey, my family. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. How is it possible that I, I am working out? I'm eating pretty healthy. That's what I thought at <laughs> this time, right? Um, and I still cannot kind of find this balance in between mental and physical health. I would gain a little bit, then I would look in the mirror and I will be like, oh, you just have to work out more. Um, and that's how um, my personal journey started. I realized that fitness is not just an answer. Just the fitness is not the answer, right? It's great to work out. It's great to weight uh, lift, but it's not the only thing I have to uh, cover in order to be healthy. And then I started to read, I started to educate myself more. I've had two master's degrees in um, journalism and uh, physical education in Russia. Then I went to Canada, I had college a diploma here as a fitness professional. But all of this um, was not enough for me to kind of figure out what's happening to my own health. And then I started to research, I started to dig deeper uh, into uh, mental health, into physical health, into habits. And then I realized that actually there are so many uh, great things which I was not doing, but they're also very simple things and I could totally implement them. And then I started implementing them. It took me about one and a half to two years to slowly um, stack on different habits. Um, different routines. Um, and then everything kind of aligned. I felt way better physically. I felt nourished. I could uh, not even keep up with my son because at that time he was two years old. Of course, I, I could keep up with him, but I could um, have, I, I did have more uh, uh, patience towards my son, more patience towards my husband, of course, because I think that um, early motherhood years is very hard if um, some work, deep work, wasn't uh, done before. And definitely it wasn't my case. And then I realized that probably I could help uh, women to do so. And at the same time, pandemic happened and we were all locked down at home. And I thought, well, maybe I will um, start some Instagram account and I had my personal account but it wasn't really any educational stuff there so I started and then 
I started working with moms and then I started um, realizing that there is no really connection in between uh, me and moms um, the, whose kids are in regular um, ho- uh, school, in just regular um, public school or Catholic school. Because um, it's not that I'm good or they're bad or <laughs> opposite. It's just we're a little bit different people. And I realized that because I always wanted to homeschool and my son was about three and a half years old at this time already, I realized that oh, maybe I should uh, focus my attention on homeschooling moms because it's really hard to be with a child all the time at home or six or seven kids. Most of my clients have five or six kids yeah. and it's you're stretched out to the limits, right? And it's really hard to be a homemaker at the same time, baking sourdough bread and doing all the cooking and cleaning and thinking how to to do more for the kids. Because I know that the difference in between uh, homeschooling moms is that we don't want to send our kids to school because we accepted that they're going to be with us until certain age, of course, when they maybe decide to go to some kind of different education um, institution. But while they're with us, we have to make sure that we are nourishing ourselves in order to show up for them better. Because it's really, really hard to manage the house, to manage the kids, to be the support your husband needs when you don't feel great or at least good okay or feel okay at least feel okay right and when you feel great or you feel good or at least you don't feel really bad it's so much easier to show up for our loved ones it's so much easier to have more patience it's so much easier to treat everyone with respect and manage kids fights right? <laughs> Kids fights are really hard to manage because you love all of them, but um, it's uh, it's like another kind of area of life when it's it's hard to, to do. It's hard to do this, right? And <clears throat> then I realized that what if I could help them to feel better and to manage their uh, lifestyle better? And that's what I did. And it worked so well just because the connection was there already. And I could understand what it is to be a homeschool mom, because at that time I was already starting homeschooling. And it's it's been great because I, I personally love it. I had uh, nine back-to-back calls, <laughs> 30 minutes calls. And uh, even though it's, you know, you think that your fitness coach or your fitness or lifestyle uh, trainer or coach, whatever the name it is, you're supposed to be moving. But my work is by computer most of the time, right? And my work is not necessarily only teaching uh, women how to eat and how to exercise, but most of it is overcoming the obstacles of why we are actually not eating, uh, why we're not exercising properly and why we know how to do things. Everyone knows in this world, exercising is great for you. Eating whole foods is great. But for some reason, we are not becoming uh, uh, healthier. Every year, we are becoming uh, less healthy and less healthy. And I find that uh, mental obstacles, like not having time or not believing that it's possible, or just sometimes overwhelmed and burnout feelings, um, that is the most what is preventing us from doing things which we know that we need to do. So my work is mostly about talking about why is it happening and how we can make it work. And what I find is uniting us as moms is that everyone wants to be perfect. And unfortunately, I have to let everyone know that perfectionism does not exist. We are not meant to be perfect. We are humans. Uh, The only one who is perfect, he lives uh, there, right? And his name is uh, the Lord. So we cannot be perfect, but we can aim to be better every single day and to align our life with 
or our goals with our actions. And that's what my business is about. If I were a stressed out mom, let's say I have five kids, which I don't, (laughs) could you walk me through what that session might look like? Well, it always depends on um, what um, what you will come to the session with. What what would you have in your mind? For example, today I had a client. She has three kids, and she is feeling very overwhelmed because she is battling some uh, uh, health issues not related to her fitness, right? And then I ask her, like, let me know what is the stress in your life because. We need to figure out how to reduce the stress because all the inflammation in the body and everything else uh, is related to stress. And of course, it's related to many other things, but we already exercising, we already eating pretty healthy. And I asked her to send me her weekly routine with her kids, what she's doing. And then when she sent me that list, I was like, okay, we, I will just recommend you as your friend not even as your coach or anything, to look at this and make sure that you uh, reduce all the activities at least twice. Because it's three kids, different ages, and she runs with all of them to about four or five different activities per week. And they are different times because it's different groups because of the age. And I looked at one day, And she's basically running in between some um, soccer, gymnastics, some ninja, karate, the whole day from 11 to 7 p.m. And then she is a a singer and she um, creates music for church. She sings in church. So she has her own band and she, of course, needs to practice with her band, right? And then she goes there. And I understand that this is, of course, her kind of nourishing activity when she can recharge her battery and be slightly for for some time away from her kids for one hour, which is great, I think, uh, especially in this case. But I said, look, you're just running from one spot to another and you have no rest. Of course, you will be overwhelmed. And what I find found myself on my personal experience is that when I am running with my son in between different um, experiences or different classes, I am stressed and he is stressed because for kids, especially kids who are younger than eight or seven or six years old, it's very stressful to do millions of things a day because they thrive on um, calm and peaceful routine. They cannot really run, run, run from one to another activity and what it creates all the stress in the family just not in the mom but in the family and um, we talked today that I recommended to decrease this she said that she sees this now because I asked her to write this routine down she sees it now now when it's on the paper that it's way too much and she said she's going to decrease it, it cancel at least two that's not related to fitness or healthy eating, okay. right? But that's what <laughs> that's what we discussed because that's what she particularly needed today. And that's why my program is uh, a personalized and customized approach because there is no one way to help different clients because we're so different and we have a different number of kids. We live in different places. The weather is different. Someone lives... Um, in California and they can walk more because it's uh, very beautiful and great weather. And someone who lives where I live, it's, I mean, usually for some reason right now it's not snowing, but usually it's like like minus million degrees here, right? And not everyone will be okay with walking. I used to walk like this, with the weather like this, but not everyone is comfortable and we will find a way how to make them move. And that's why Everyone needs different approach. There is no one or one way to help everyone. That sounds like I might be able to come to you with goals, right? And you'll give mm-hmm. a path to achieve that goal, but it'll be different oh, yes. for each person. Yes, 100%. Yes. And in my program, we try to um, to lean towards the word focus rather than goals, 
because I find that go, the word goals is stressful. It's the stressful word because we have so, so many things already to focus on. And when, when we say goals, when they don't achieve something, they just very discouraged. But focus is a little bit less stressing word because when we focus on something, it doesn't mean that we have to reach it. It means that we're walking towards it. But when it's the word goal, it's kind of like, oh, I didn't reach my goal. That's it. I'm a loser. I, I hear it all the time, this word. And then I have to address the problem with uh, negative self-talk, right? Mm-hmm. Then, and then, then it's not about fitness again. <laughs> <laughs> On all over coach. So I know you talk a lot about homeschooling and fatigue specifically, but you also mm-hmm. did your pre and postnatal trip postnatal training, what was your takeaway from that training? Well, my takeaway is that uh, once you're postpartum, you're always postpartum and uh, you not necessarily will have to do kegels or different things for the rest of your life, but you need to have some routine which will work particularly for you to um, work on your pelvic floor because we all have different deliveries. Someone delivered uh, normal way. I mean, there is no really normal or not normal way, but someone delivered vaginally and someone delivered through C-section. Someone had uh, twins and someone had just one child and six kids, six pregnancies and two pregnancies would um, make the body not only look different from the outside, but from the inside, right? Um, the stomach uh, or stomach muscles are stretched out more and uh, this potentially will need more work. Or for example, if someone had pregnancies back to back, I had some clients who had five or six kids and four of them under three. So this is great. That's amazing. I'm so happy. And I wish I I did start earlier so I could have the same uh, number of kids because kids are joy. But on the body, it's pretty hard because um, the body, the female's body takes time to heal. And when we don't give the body this time, the next pregnancy will have, uh, will will affect the body and stress the body a little bit more, right? It doesn't mean that it's bad and it's impossible to fix or to help. It just means it needs more work because fascia uh, and muscles, when they stretched out, uh, they will be healing a little bit differently than when it's healed and then the pregnancy happened. Mm-hmm. So it's very, very important, especially when you start exercising, because you cannot load weight and we work on weightlifting a lot. You can't really weight, uh, load weight on the body and especially core and pelvic floor um, weak body mm-hmm. because core is called core because it's protecting us basically from our shoulders to our hips everything is core and without strong core strong foundation because core is foundation we can't even stand upright we will be falling right and i'm saying it with a little bit uh uh, too much uh, attention to this, but of course, of course, everyone is able to stand straight. But if someone's core is absolutely not working, that person would be falling or folding mm-hmm. into into half in the hips area, and that's why before working out uh, with weights or just working out, and especially postpartum, we need to make sure that the core is addressed, the pelvic floor is addressed, because every time we lift weight. Uh, the diaphragm and pelvic floor, it ju- just even without lifting weight, the diaphragm and the pelvic floor work synergetically. When we breathe, when we inhale, diaphragm goes up, pelvic floor relaxes and goes down. And when we exhale, it kind of moves towards each other. Mm-hmm. So when we lift weight, it has to be the same way because if we lift weight and our pelvic floor is not supported and kind of activated, the pressure from diaphragm will be pushing it down. And this is not good at all because it's creating uh, urinary incontinence. 
different types of prolapses and different issues which we want to avoid because unfortunately we are getting older right <laughs> year by year but what it means it means that we have to take better care of our body so when we are older we don't have things like uh, prolapse for example because we took care of this prior to mm -hmm. um getting older and because when we're getting older our hormones are working differently so the prolapse is kind of it could happen even if we work before um, we are aging or before we're getting like to 70 or 80 just because the muscles are not that strong anymore and this is absolutely normal we are losing the muscle mass the bone mass especially women year after year we are getting weaker year after year but it doesn't mean that we should not work on these things to maybe lose just 10 percent of our strengths rather than 50 percent and then all of this is influencing uh, the way how we will be living when we are older and the way how much of independence we will have i want to live my life very long as long as I am capable of staying independent and also capable to help my kids and grandkids, hopefully, um, with even babysitting. And babysitting, <laughs> babies is not that simple, especially when they're two or three, when they want to run. I want to go to hikes with my kids, uh, with my grandkids and kids, of course. I want to do all the things um, up to my last day. And hopefully that's what I will do. And that's what I want women to understand that, yes, we can't avoid everything and whatever will happen will happen. However, we can try to prevent and we can try to help our bodies to handle it a little bit better step by step. And that's when I teach my clients to stop focusing on being perfect, because when they're focusing on being perfect, eventually if one workout doesn't happen, then they think it's okay. This week is so bad. I'm just going to start on Monday. So instead of missing one uh, workout, they're just missing two or three workouts, right? And it's, it's not, it doesn't do anything good for them. I think for me being, you know, a younger mom, not a younger mom, but young in my momhood, to think about my grandkids is kind of mind blowing. You want to start now. So you're able to pick up that grandbaby at three years old when you're at that stage in life. Yes. Or maybe grand grandkids. Great grandkids. That's just crazy to think about, but it is important to start now. So you're building incrementally and then you don't have to do so much later. You can achieve balance like you said yes for the mama that is in that newborn stage do you have any advice yes sleep <laughs> it's it's funny i know everyone says the same thing but uh from uh my uh, perspective why sleep is important because even if you cover everything working out uh, eating healthy uh, water and supplements and being outside if you don't sleep it doesn't matter because sleep is so fundamental and foundational it's not even a goal of focus it's such a basic need and when we sleep we recover when we sleep our hormone hormones are getting into balance when we sleep uh, our cells uh, are um, i don't know getting better right when we sleep uh, our muscles recovering Everything is recovering. When there is lack of sleep, most likely it's stress, overeating, it's uh, feeling depressed. Sleep is influencing mental health. When I sleep and I used to sleep for four hours, that is the worst time of my life. I thought, I don't want to live like this. If, if this is life, I don't want life like this, right? Literally sleep is everything and this is the most important so i would recommend sleep and focusing on 
learning and bonding with the baby and um, delegating as much as possible when it comes to cleaning, when it comes to cooking, as much as possible if there are people who, who, um, who can help. Is there a better time to reach out to you prenatal, postnatal, or is any time a good time? I just in general, I would not even work with someone who is less than three to four months postpartum. I know that um, North America is kind of like um, they are assessing six or eight weeks depending on the method of delivery. And they're saying, oh, yeah, you cleared by just talking to the person, right? I always recommend, if possible, to see a pelvic floor therapy specialist. Um, it's the best investment a, a ma postpartum mama can do for herself. However, even better is to start even before getting pregnant because healthy pregnancy is... Uh, in order to have a healthy pregnancy. And again, nothing is guaranteed in life, right? Some people are extremely healthy and then when they get pregnant, they have something what, what prevents them from exercising or even getting up from bed. However, it doesn't mean that we should not try to be healthy prior to um, getting pregnant. But if you're already pregnant, don't be afraid of moving. Don't be afraid of walking don't be afraid of uh, having specific to pregnancy workouts, lifting weights. Even if you were not active before, you can start tomorrow by finding a person who can work with you, by finding a person who is familiar with the pre and postnatal uh, 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 workouts, right? And um, by not fearing it. Because uh, your body, and listen, you, you need to listen to your body. Because when you have this intuition and you're connected to your body, you will know what's good and what's bad for you. So I would say that physical activity, having enough water a day, and focusing on whole foods um, is the main, the main thing. And if you know, have some cakes sometimes, or you have some cravings for some sweets, or not sweets, it doesn't matter because if your 80% or 90% of your food is whole foods, not even necessarily always organic, not everyone is able to always eat organic. Or when we go to a restaurant, it's not always organic, right? But if you're eating veggies and protein and then fruits, 80 to 90 or 70 even, or even 60% of the time, you will be good because that's, that matters a lot. I appreciate you saying that about well your name is um nourished motherhood and that nourishment does play such a big role nutrition and what you offer what are ways that people can get in contact with you to learn more yes so my instagram is as you said at dot nourished dot motherhood and they can send me a dm i'm it's myself and only me. I don't have a team yet and probably not going to have it because I don't want my business to be anything crazy, right? Because uh, when it's personalized approach, you unfortunately cannot stretch out to 100 people, especially if you're homeschooling, right? And I want to homeschool and I want to spend time with my son and I also want to move <laughs> and today for six or seven hours I was sitting uh, and it was really hard to sit by computer all the time but it's a uh, nourished mother at nourished motherhood with the dots in between words uh, on Instagram and then my website no dots just uh, one word at nourished motherhood.com uh, it's in a process of uh, building I probably think by the end of February it's going to be done and person who is building up my website is seven months pregnant so it, it should be done right because she probably doesn't want to kind of keep going uh, into her um, postpartum period with sure. my website but um, that, are, that are two basically two um, ways of uh, reaching me out or you can email me hello at 
at nourishedmotherhood.com. So it's a sign at, and then it's a word at. Wonderful. We'll, we'll include that in the show notes mm-hmm. as well. Thank you so much, Evgenia. Thank you. Thank you. I do really appreciate you giving me a possibility to share my message with uh, women and moms. Thank you.